How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for hematology step one, internal medicine 2CK. 60 year old woman admitted to hospital for chemotherapy. If rapid cell lysis ensues, which the following most likely seen as patient. Now, I could have taken this question one of two directions. And uh, as I'll talk about, um, I'll talk about both directions. Uh, why don't I just start the fucking explanation? Don't really know where I was going to go with that. So we've got an image here, and you can clearly see that there's our rods. Now, the way this works in USMLE when you're looking at AML, don't worry about whether it's M2 or M3, okay, for APL, 15, 17 translocation, where you see the R rods. USMLE doesn't give a fuck, okay? Students get hysterical about OMG, is it M2 or M3? So you're looking at the image, image here of the R rods, and what's going to go down is, if you don't know to look for our rods, you're not going to see them, even though they're obvious in this picture. And I jacked up the saturation, the contrast. Okay. So if you know to look for them and you look at this image here, they're conspicuous. Okay. Now, you simply wants you to know that when you treat AML, the release of our rods into the circulation can cause a couple complications. It's two directions I was talking about where I can bring this clip. So let's just hop to the answers here. Choice A. Decreased serum potassium, wrong fucking answer. Now, if anything, we could see increased serum potassium in theory, secondary to renal failure due to tumor lysis syndrome. That's one trajectory, okay, which is not relevant here. But you need to know that lysis of leukemic cells in general, not limited to AML, okay, just in general, uh, you get release of nucleic acids from the nuclei into the bloodstream, and then you're, that's going to produce uric acid, and that can lead to tumor lysis syndrome. And what they're going to do, it shows up on one of the new NBMEs for step one, what they're going to do is, is ask you, giving a, an agent that inhibits which the following enzymes can prevent renal failure in this patient, and the answer is going to be xanthine oxidase. So if you give allopurinol as an example, or fabuxostat, you can prevent tumor lysis syndrome when you have that production of uric acid. Now, a tangential point is you're not going to give 6-mercaptopurine with allopurinol because 6-MP and azathioprine as well can be metabolized into 6-MP. So those two drugs you can't give with allopurinol or fabuxostat because those two agents require xanthine oxidase for metabolism so you can get toxicity. So in renal failure, if anything, we'd have increased, not decreased potassium. Wrong fucking answer. Should I just be increased angiotensin 2? Wrong fucking answer. No, it's just not relevant here. Now, likewise, in conjunction with choice A, we could articulate the notion that if a patient has some sort of renal insufficiency that ensues, we could have RAS jacked up if we have inflammation of the microvasculature, any, any acute disturbance in blood flow. I mean, it's not an outrageous answer choice. Some students might argue, well, couldn't we technically possibly see a little bit of AT2 go up? Point is, it's fucking wrong. Choice C, increased plasma activity, correct answer. Now, this is reflective of DIC, and I'm not trying to be slick or an asshole here. It's what NBME does. You need to know that release of our rods, which are composed of myeloperoxase, a blue-green heme-containing pigment, which tangentially actually gives phlegm its color, release of the our rods into the circulation precipitate disseminated intravascular coagulation DIC in some patients. We can get schistocytes. Nine out of 10 questions, you're going to see an increased bleeding time, PT, PTT, all three increased. You're going to see a consumption of platelets. And you're going to see decreased fibrinogen because it's converted over into fibrin. Because we have increased fibrin, we're also going to have increased plasminogen converted to plasmin, which is the enzyme that breaks down fibrin. So if you have more clot formation in terms of maintaining homeostasis, we need to have more clot breakdown. Fibrin degradation products are AKA D-dimer. So D-dimer is up. If that sounds very fucking confusing slash a mouthful, I talk about it in my high yield hematology PDF, which by all means I'll link down below. But if you're seeing this question and you think that this is hard, just know that when you see choice C here, that's actually very buzzy. Like the alarm bells should go off in your head that, oh, that answer choice is just referring to DIC. Okay. Real quick, uh, choice D, inhibition of HGPRT, wrong fucking answer. Okay, this is just an enzyme that is deficient in lesch nyhan syndrome. So that's an excellent recessive condition where it's congenital gout, essentially. So there's self-mutilation. Uh, the kids will 
Uh, I'm not kidding. The kids will actually like rub their faces off on carpet. Uh, they can get red, orange, sandy appearing crystals in the diaper. Okay. And they get increased uric acid. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, inhibition of delta ALA synthase, wrong fucking answer. This could refer to sideroblastic anemia. You need to know that the first step of heme synthesis is succinyl CoA plus glycine via vitamin B6 and delta ALA synthase goes to delta ALA. So we talk about the heme synthesis disorders, a lot to discuss, but sideroblastic anemia, where you can get ringed sideroblasts, uh, they stain blue with Prussian blue stain. Uh, that can be either X-linked recessive uh, condition, or it can be classically alcohol-induced. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.